Hi, my name is Garrett. I'm a project consultant with August Roofing and Solar. And today we're gonna to be looking at a roof inspection I did in Westlake Village. I already have my ladder set up here. And so homeowner currently has a leak above one of the bathrooms. So in this scenario, he had a leak above the bathroom. Where I'm going is essentially directly to, to that location. I do wanna check the general area and make sure that I don't see anything else going on with the roof. So we're gonna take a look of a flat concrete tile. As I climbed up the ladder, I noticed that he had a, a flat concrete tile, which, you know, comes in many different profiles. This one right here was a lightweight, and so it's really easy to damage lightweight tiles just by walking on them. Any sort of excess pressure will cause it to crack because it is lightweight. It's not as thick of a material, essentially. Standard weight tile, the way they range is they're typically like 900 pounds per square. And a square is basically 100 square feet of roof area. Lightweight kind of more so ranges in the 600 to 700 um, weight range. And so it's just less concrete essentially. And so they can break more easily when you're walking on them. Like we got tile riser metal here and gutter cover. When we're looking at where the gutter is, I mentioned there's a tile riser metal with all the tiles that overlap with each other. Once you get to the edge of the roof, in order to kind of keep everything that flat profile, if you didn't have anything to bump up the tile on the edge, it would bend down a little more than the other tiles and cause kind of an area where it's just not sitting properly. And so we install tile riser, which has like little weep holes in it. So if water does get under to the underlayment, it has an, a point of exit. You do see sometimes where um, instead of using a tile riser metal, a builder perhaps would use an extra piece of trim and kind of raise the tile up. It's much better to use a tile riser metal because it actually still has those weep holes and allows water to flow out of it. And it won't rot out if water does get trapped underneath the tiles and gets kind of stuck in that area where it meets the gutter. The roof isn't too old, about 10 years in most sections. And uh, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna take a look here. We got tiles here. Slip them down some. It's on there good. Sometimes tiles will slip down. And whenever I'm doing an inspection, I do try to see if I notice a tile that's kind of slipped down slightly. Because usually that's an indication that it might not be secured. And it allows me to kind of pull the tile down and get a good look at the underlayment on the roof. Whenever you see a tile roof and all the tiles are in place, it's really hard to get a good gauge of exactly the condition of the roof because it's concrete, it lasts a long time. Really seeing the underlayment's the, the key way to know roughly the condition of it. You get to see if it still has a lot of asphalt in it. If it has a lot of asphalt in it, it'll still be kind of black. Whereas if it's lost its asphalt over time, it's gonna look like a light brown. Typically it is coated in dirt and stuff if it does get underneath the tile. It's a good way to kind of gauge what the condition of the underlayment is because you know generally when we're replacing a tile roof if the tiles are okay and the homeowner likes the aesthetic doesn't want to change it and we can match the profile what we'll do is we'll just do a tile reset this is one of the tiles the homeowner mentioned they went in and put some sealing on i do a tune up and replace the broken damaged tiles he sealed the tile there which it's definitely better than doing nothing because ultimately what happens with tile roofs at times is we lose tiles and they'll crack and uh, they'll slip down and expose the underlayment. If a tile slips and it exposes the underlayment or if a tile cracks, the best thing you could do is replace that tile immediately so that the underlayment's not being super exposed to the sun. Once the underlayment's exposed to the sun, it breaks it down a lot easier. And so it causes areas to where a leak's gonna happen. So tile roofs are super crucial with maintenance. It's, it's something that could be missed at times because it depends on where your roof is, but if it's up a second story and you don't see exactly what's going on up there, a tile could have been slipped for a long time and you you not know it. This metal stain and seam turret right here. So that was a metal standing seam turret. It's a metal roof on essentially a, a circular structure and you know, nothing wrong with that currently or any sort of issues. Those will generally last, you know, a long time, a metal roof on it. What do we have here? 
a little cricket on this super wide chimney. This is a, a cricket. What a cricket does is if it's such a wide chimney, it's best to have one so that it pushes the water to either side as opposed to it hitting the chimney and you kind of just hoping that it's gonna trickle to the sides. Quality of the work done here looks it's looking good. No flashing in the valleys. Okay, so yeah, here's a couple broken tiles with the sealant on them in these areas. Customer has O'Hagan vents. Some metal O'Hagan vents right here. These right here, uh, they're called O'Hagan vents. It's the manufacturer. It's the kind that we use on all of our roofs. What's nice about them is that they are low profile vents. If you ever had solar put on the roof, they can fit right underneath a solar panel without messing up kind of the placement of the panels. You can see that we installed some that were lower on the edge of the roof and some that were higher. What that does is it kind of creates a natural convection. The cooler air will come in from these lower vents and then push the hot air out of the peak. We order an attic ventilation analysis directly from O'Hagan. They basically will generate a report for us that outlines exactly where the vent should go on the roof based off of where the attic space is. You only need the roof fence whenever there is an attic space above. So sometimes homeowners will have vaulted ceilings or exposed beams within the house. And in those cases, there's no need to put the vents because there's not a space that we're trying to uh, keep cool. On this home, he did have an attic space above a second story. And so by adding these vents, it keeps his attic space a lot cooler which helps prolong the life of the roof and also helps him with his heating and cooling bills, make sure his second story is not super hot as opposed to his first story. You can see how I'm walking on this tile roof. It's, it's a lightweight concrete tile and so it's really easy to break. And so what I do is I essentially I'll walk where the tiles overlap. There's a three inch headlap is what each concrete tile should have. So basically three inches where these tiles overlap. When walking on a tile roof, I wanna stay, keep my foot in that area so that I'm not stepping too high on the tile where there's kind of a hollow area underneath. If I step in that area, there's nothing really there to support me. Now the leak's coming from this area, right around this stack here. Got a little, little trash bag tarp. On this roof, the homeowner, he had the leak in the bathroom and so he had gone up there, he did it, uh, he glued some tiles himself that he noticed that were cracked and he put this little tarp, he just used a, a trash bag, whatever he had on hand to kind of hopefully prevent some damage in that area, do some leak mitigation essentially. That's what we're looking at right here. See if we can get a look underneath here, engage what's going on. Luckily it's a small area what do we got here? Right here, looks like the seal on this thing is not all cracked. I'm gonna part there. Might be the cause right there. This pipe, it makes sense that it's coming from his bathroom. Essentially, it's ventilation for the plumbing. Most roofs that you see, as long as there's plumbing in the home, will have pipes coming out. It's up to us, the roofer, to make sure that it has a good base flashing around that pipe and that it's all sealed where it meets the pipe. We use an elastomeric sealant in those areas to go around the pipes. And it's really tough because the sun can beat down on the roof and sealants in themselves are not really a full on permanent solution. The elastomeric sealant's definitely the best thing that we could do, but um, as preventative maintenance comes, say in 10 years or so, it's good to make sure all your pipe seals are properly sealed and reseal them if you need to, to prevent any sort of water damage in areas. In his case, that's exactly where his leak was happening. Might be the cause right there. I got some more chip tiles with some sealing on them. Let's see if we can get an area where we can begin. Really small section. This section of the roof, where it meets this hip tile, basically what's running down to the corner of the house and where it meets the wall is a small section and so in the case that if it was the underlayment in this section if the roof was only 10 or 15 years old 
you could easily do a repair and go all the way to the hip and then to the wall and make sure that you fully cover the area to make sure that the leak's taken care of. We see it all the time where a repair will be done but it's a section of the underlayment and it's in the middle of uh, a roof plane. There is a proper way to do that. It's just not something that will be reused or could potentially be saved in the event of a re-roof later on. The way to do it is essentially from the edge of the roof, bring it all the way to the peak if you are gonna do kind of like a cut in with the underlayment. And the reason for that is because we wanna make sure that if water's getting in higher up where the leak is happening from higher up, but you only actually see it from the interior on the lower edge, that it's fully addressed. But sometimes water works in kind of some interesting ways and it'll come in from the higher section of the roof and then it'll kind of trickle down rafters in the attic or however it gets down to the bottom. And then whenever you actually see it on your drywall, it's happening kind of like on the edge of the roof. And so super important to make sure you source your leaks properly and know exactly where it's coming from so you don't put money in on a repair thinking that you got it all taken care of only to find out the next rain that it's not fully addressed yet. Given the age of the roof, the underlayment shouldn't be shouldn't be shot. It's debris. Clean that out. It's a peanut. Sometimes with tile roofs, pests will use the roof to kind of get into the attic space. And you see it happen a lot where the roof meets a wall. Like say, there's an overhang and it connects to the roof. Sometimes there's a little bit of an opening where it meets the stucco and you know, you'll see rats and all those types of things. You use those, even raccoons, getting into the attic space. Whenever you see like a, a, a peanut or something like that, kind of an indication that there might be um, pests that have at least tried to get into the home. You see it a lot with uh, the high profile tile roofs or clay tile roofs, which is why that tile roof has bird stop on the edge. It's called bird stop because it prevents birds from getting underneath and nesting in there. Same thing with solar panels. Sometimes you see birds that will go underneath and use it for shelter essentially, and they'll set up a home underneath your solar panel. So the way you prevent that is you put bird stop, which is essentially like a netting around the edges of your panels. Definitely important to keep those things in mind, especially whenever you're getting a new roof, maybe even like adding some hardware cloth, which is like a mesh where it meets these roof to wall sections to make sure that you keep all the pests out of your house essentially. Come back and replace some of these broken tiles. Help seal around this pilot was the main thing. Check if the homeowner will let me in to see what's going on on the inside, but looking like this pipe is probably the main issue. Let's see, this tile will slip. I'm wondering if we can get a look at the underlayment. Here we go. Yeah, look at that. This underlayment is in great shape. So right here, you know, I was able to pull down the tile finally. And when, when you look at this underlayment, you can see that it's still black. And so it, it's, it still has a lot of its asphalt in it. And when you get close to this one, you could also see that it's a fiberglass based underlayment. And so it has little white hairs kind of intertwined in it. That's the internal component of it. And so it's definitely a, a high quality underlayment as opposed to like the paper based 30 pound that we see, or a number 30 underlayment. Whenever I'm able to pull it down and see that it's black like that, I know that the underlayment itself is in good shape. It doesn't mean that there's no install errors and any other areas or anything like that, but it at least tells me, okay, it's not just the fact that the age of this roof is uh, expired, it's that this should be doing its job when installed properly. Yeah, aside from just that sealant coming apart, everything else seems to be holding up. We'll replace some of these broken tiles, but yeah, probably from something, some debris hitting the roof maybe, not too sure. I do think that that has to be a, a major factor with why this homeowner had so many broken tiles. You can see all the tree leaf debris kind of coming in. You know, there's some trees kind of off to the side. And so any sort of limbs that fall on the roof, generally if it's a standard weight tile, it won't break things um, too easily unless it's you know a decent size limb but the lightweight concrete tile if it hits it in the right spot it's gonna crack it and break it also if he has different trades come out to his house so you know sometimes people have HVAC units up on their roof people 
needing to go onto the roof for any other reason, if they break tiles by mistake, it might not be something that gets addressed. If you have people work on your home, it is important to make sure that, you know, nothing else went, went sideways with the roof. Just a general tune-up to take care of this project, why it's important to maintain your tile roofs. A general tune-up is generally replacing missing or broken tiles uh, matching the existing as close as possible. We will reseal all the pipes, and so make sure that everything is all sealed up and good in those areas. If there's any slip tiles, we'll want to secure those with like an adhesive essentially, get those back into place to make sure that they don't slip out again. Realistically, that's those are the main things that we address with a tune-up. We're not dealing with the underlayment because the underlayment's in great shape, and we just want to maintain that to make sure that it's not gonna have any issues. Start having slipped the cracked tiles. You know, luckily this homeowner comes up and he's noticed some of the cracked ones so he sealed them up but you know while we're here addressing this leak we'll go ahead and get everything else repaired so there you have it. So on this one um, I went inside and I, I confirmed the leak location to be that pipe. Based off my inspection all that was really needed was a good tune up on his roof just to bring it back and make sure everything was in order for the coming rainy season. That's what we recommended and that's what we did. If you notice any leaks in your home or if you notice any broken tiles on your roof, give August Roofing and Solar a call and one of our project consultants will come out and give you all the information you need to make the best decision for you and your family. Give us a call today.